For a long period of time, Milan Lucic was perhaps one of the scariest competitors in the entire NHL. Known for his bone-crushing hits, his controversial play, and the ability to single-handedly force the entire opposition to doubt themselves every single second that Lucic was on the ice. And for those of you who didn't witness Lucic back in his heyday, think Ryan Reeves. He's considered the scariest player in the NHL today. Now think of Ryan Reeves, but the ability to score 30 goals and play big minutes. So to put it simply, Lucic was a monster. He was the definition of an NHL mutant. He routinely had north of 250 hits per season. He was able to score goals, and Lucic was a massive factor in Boston's 2011 Stanley Cup win. Yet today, Lucic has turned into the media punching bag. On this graph, we see Lucic is scoring from 2011 until 2017, and 2013 was the lockout season. And during this time, Luch averaged 23.5 goals per season, an extremely impressive stat line given his playing style. And this is Lucic's scoring the past three seasons. It is very clear that his offense has just fallen off a cliff. In today's video, we're going to discuss the rise and fall of Milan Lucic. We're going to take a deep dive into the development of his career, and we're going to try to get a better understanding of what made him an all-star and why in the past two to three years, we're seeing massive regression in his game. In voice of this video, what is your guys' opinion on Lucic? Is he getting too much flack? Will his game continue to regress? Comment down below and maybe let me know by the time you're finished watching this video, has your opinion changed on Lucic? Because he's clearly a very controversial figure in today's game. And make sure to press that subscribe button for some more awesome hockey content. Guys, thank you guys so much for all the support. Let's get right into this video. Milan Lucic, born in Vancouver, Canada, raised by his parents who were Serbian immigrants, grew up strongly connected to the game as his uncle Dan Kessa was actually a Canucks draft pick and played professional hockey for over a decade. And Lucic grew up playing minor league hockey within the Vancouver system. And if you're not familiar with the WHL, at the age of 14, sometimes even 13, players are drafted into the WHL Bantam Draft. And around the age of 14, Milan unfortunately found out he had Sherman's disease, which causes his spine to curve. And at this point, Lucic was not turning heads. In fact, he went undrafted in the Bantam Draft because many scouts felt as if his skating was not going to improve. And after being undrafted and being diagnosed with the Sherman's disease, it is reported that Lucic even contemplated quitting hockey altogether. But through hard work and determination, Lucic saw massive strides in his game. At the age of 16, he started the season playing Junior B for the Delta Hawks of the Pacific Junior Hockey League. And because of his game's massive improvements, he quickly found himself in the BCHL. And he even made his first appearance in the WHL. And clearly he did impress enough in that one game as this was the start of a dominating junior career. And in 2005, Lucci started his WHL career. And even though he was late getting into the WHL and he had a late development curve, he was still drafted in the second round to the Boston Bruins. And in the next season, we'd see Milan Lucic coming into form. As he was a dominating force for the Vancouver Giants. 30 goals, 68 points, a strong physical game. And Lucic at this point was a man playing against boys. Like we're talking Lucic had a 50 pound advantage against basically everyone on the ice. And Lucic carried the Giants to the Memorial Cup Finals where he ran the show and won the cup. And then finally, in 2007, Lucic would make his introduction into the NHL. So within a three year span, Lucic went from almost quitting hockey altogether, playing Junior B, getting drafted, dominating the CHL, and then playing his first full season in the NHL. Fast forward to 2008, his sophomore season, Lucic again saw massive development in his game. As this is where we'd see his offensive game progress really well. 17 goals, 42 points, alongside of 259 hits, and Lucic also proved he was a massive playoff performer, putting up nearly a point per game with 9 points in 10 games. So fast forward to 2011. We would see Lucic dominating the league with his physical presence. And at this point, every single team, every player knew who Lucic was. Teams were having to develop strategies to mitigate his physical presence. And not only was he dominating the game physically, he also had 30 goals. So not only were teams afraid to play against him, but he could also make you pay on the scoreboard. And at this point, Lucic was also getting into a lot of controversy. We're talking the notorious hit on Ryan Miller controversy. Because in 2011, the Boston Bruins basically bullied their way to winning a Stanley Cup. And this may seem like an exaggeration, but many Canucks have admitted that they were bullied to the point where they just couldn't compete. 
And starting with Lucic, the physicality within that lineup was far too much to handle, and it showed. And Lucic lifted his first Stanley Cup, being a huge player in that finals. And the next four seasons in Boston, it was more of the same. Lucic was a dominating physical force who could also score goals. And then in 2013, during the lockout season, the Boston Bruins found themselves in the finals once again, matched up against the Chicago Blackhawks. And Lucic once again was a massive factor in this run. 19 points in 22 games, his same physical performance. However, the Bees would lose in six. And then in 2015, the Boston Bruins would make a massive deal, sending Lucic to the LA Kings for Martin Jones, Colin Miller, and a first round pick. And Lucic, yet again as an LA King, would have a great season, where he is a physical force, where he chipped in offensively, and played a good defensive game. However, Lucic and the Kings would not negotiate a deal, and he entered the 2016 free agency. And this is where who else but Peter Shirelli, who is a part of the Boston Bruins championship team, would give out a monster seven year, $42 million contract. And this contract would basically serve as the demise for Milan Lucic in the NHL. But before we get into why Lucic is declining, what made Lucic a great player? Well, it was pretty obvious. Lucic had unmatched physicality. When Lucic was on the ice, every player knew. He was intimidating and he had the physical stature to live up to his reputation. But on top of this, unlike other enforcers in the NHL, Lucic had offensive capabilities to score goals. And this of course would be an extremely dangerous and valuable combination. Because whether he'd be a net front presence or was able to power his way to the net, Lucic was basically a goal scoring enforcer. And because of this, Lucic was a very valuable piece. And he got even more valuable in the playoffs where his presence was felt way more intensely. And even though the NHL is shifting towards that skill-based game, we just saw the St. Louis Blues who won the Stanley Cup in a similar bullying fashion. So in 2016, when Lucic entered the Edmonton Oilers system, there was a lot of expectations. Now, it was obvious that he was losing his foot speed, but he still had 23 goals and the same physical presence as he helped bring the Oilers back to the playoffs. So what happened? Why is Milan Lucic experiencing a massive drop-off in his game? Well, to start with the most obvious component, Lucic's foot speed has fallen off a cliff. And this is definitely the most common thing that people tend to point towards. Because skating was never his strong suit. His skating at the peak of his career was maybe average. But it didn't really matter because his other tangibles compensated. And so when you're getting older and you're just a massive unit, losing foot speed in an NHL game that is getting extremely high paced is just a recipe for disaster. But to be honest, in my opinion, this isn't really the major issue here. The issue here is the expectations that were created because of his contract. When you're making big dollars, fans are gonna destroy you in a Canadian market if you're not performing. Because think about it this way. Think Ryan Reeves. He plays limited minutes with a strategic role to be that physical presence. He leads the league in hits and can drop the mitts with anybody. And because of this, Ryan Reeves is loved by the fans. He's a highly coveted asset and he makes 2.775 million per season. And Ryan Reeves is loved because he does exactly what is expected. So when you apply this rationale, I guarantee you if Lucic was even making two thirds of his contract, playing that physical game with more limited minutes while being a great leader and FYI, teammates love Lucic, there wouldn't be a single issue. In fact, Lucic would be loved on a team like Edmonton as he'd stick up for guys like McDavid and Drysaddle. But when he applies contract in this situation, it looks terrible. And this is where Lucic's flaws are emphasized as the GM will try very hard to make him succeed. Because think about the GM. Let's just say Peter Shirelli. He wants Lucic to succeed more than anybody. He signed him and Peter Shirelli himself is getting a lot of flag from ownership and from the fans. And so what does Peter Shirelli do? Because it's honestly a trickle down effect. He'll have the coach play Lucic more. And so that's when we see Lucic playing with Conor McDavid, you know, with Dry Saddle. We're seeing him play more and we're seeing him play big minutes where it just doesn't make sense. And because of his contract, he's getting forced into line combinations that just don't make sense. As Lucic in Edmonton averaged north of 50 minutes per game. Now, 50 minutes to some may not seem like a lot, but that is extremely high for an enforcer type playing style like Lucic. So let's look towards the future. 
I personally believe that Milan Lucic still has a place in today's game, as he can provide that bottom six physical presence. But there's also no doubt that as he gets older, his skating will continue to regress while he's in Calgary. And even as myself, a Canucks fan who used to despise Lucic growing up, I really do hope he proves everyone wrong. Because in a game that's shifting towards skill, Lucic remains as a relic of the past. So, what is your opinion on Milan Lucic? Have I changed your mind? Does he still have a place within our game? Or will he be out of the lineup within a few seasons? Let me know down below how you guys feel about Milan Lucic, who was a star at one time and is seeing massive regression today. Anyways guys, before we end this video, the RTA channel has surpassed 10,000 subscribers. And of course, you know, I, wanna, I just wanna thank everyone for the ongoing support. It's been truly amazing. You know, I'm very grateful. I started 2020 with the goal, I was, I was sitting around 2,000 subscribers, and I started with the goal to hit 5,000 subscribers by the end of the year. We're only three months into 2020, and we've already hit 10,000 subscribers, and that honestly just blows my mind. And if you guys don't know much about me, I'm a full-time student in university at the moment. I'm working nearly 30 plus hours in my marketing career, and then add on 30 to 40 hours for YouTube. So this year has just been chaotic. And obviously as of recently, it's been way more chaotic and I'm sure you guys are experiencing the same thing. So I wanna make sure that you guys, I let you guys know that your support makes this whole process so much easier and I appreciate it so, so much. Anyways guys, stay safe, have a great day. See you guys later.